I want to give a like broad summary of the skip gram word to vec model. And I also want to highlight some things that bothered me in the paper. So if you look at the original uh, Mikulov paper, you see a diagram looking very similar to this. Um, it's a little bit confusing because it looks like you're, you have a model that takes in a center word and then kicks out the different context words. Okay, the man loves his son. But that's not exactly what is actually happening underneath the model if you look at the structure and the loss function. So I wanted to redraw this picture as a neural network vector diagram. So we haven't really spoken about um, Skipgram as a neural network, but it's helpful to think about this um, using kind of a, a neural network vector diagram notation, because that's really how you would implement this if you were using a package like PyTorch or TensorFlow. So we're going to look at one pair of words where you have a, a center word that occurs with some context word, okay? And this is our like input output. You can think of it as the input and output, but you will see in a second, actually you input both of them. And what the model kicks out is a score for these two things occurring together. Okay, so we've got our center word C, okay? And with that center word, we've got a little word embedding. And that word embedding is called BC. Then for all of the words in our entire vocabulary, we've got little context word embeddings. So the, for the first word in our vocabulary, we've got a context word embedding. And let's say that word is artvark, which often turns out to be the first word. The second word, I don't know, is let's say R. And that has a context word embedding U2. Okay, and so on. Here we've got some other word embedding, so on, up to Q capital V. Okay, let's say that's the word zoo. Maybe that's the last word in our, our vocabulary. Okay, cool. Now we're looking at one pair of center word with a corresponding context word. And this context word will be one of the words in this like big list of word vectors for our vocabulary. Okay, and so let's just say that that context word is the word his, okay, so loves his son. So maybe this word here is loves, okay, and maybe our context word is the word his occurring here, okay. Now I'm going to scribble that out and I'm going to make that a green vector, okay, and this is you, oh, now what Skipgram does is it's going to take the dot product of our center word embedding with all of the context word embeddings, okay? And it's going to stack that into one big enormous vector. So what you do is for the first element in this vector, you take the dot product of my center word with my first word here, okay? And you take that dot product and you write that down there, okay? Um, that would be U1 transpose times VC. Okay. For the second element, you take the dot product between my second um, context word embedding and my center word embedding. And that's what you write down at that point there. And you continue in this way. You take the dot product with all the other stuff right here at the end. Okay. Here we end up with U capital V transpose times my center word embedding. Now, all of these are scalars, right? You're taking the dot product, so you're um, taking the scalars. Somewhere in the middle here, we have the dot product of our current context word with our center word. So somewhere here, we've got the dot product of this embedding with that embedding. Okay, and that is uh, U, O, transpose times VC. Okay, now what you do is you, you get all of these dot products, you stack them all into one big vector. This vector has values between minus infinity and infinity, and there are capital V of them. Next step, you take this and, and then you pass that through a function called the softmax. What comes out of the softmax is another vector that looks very similar to the dot product vector that we had before with the 
very crucial thing that if you look at all the numbers in this vector, they will all be between zero and one. And if you add them all up, they will also sum to one. Okay, so we can think of this as the as this as the actual output of our model with parameters theta, which are all the v and um, u vectors, for an input that is the current center word. That's how you can think of the output. Okay, and one of the outputs in this enormous vector, one of them corresponds to the green point. Okay, which is the current context word that I'm seeing. So one of these outputs, output number O, so the oath output in this vector would correspond to that particular context word that I'm currently observing. If you think about this model as F, then the oath output of this model, when it's fed with center word C, okay, and it's parameterized by theta, then this corresponds to the particular context word that I'm observing. And the way we think about this particular element here is we think of this as the probability of observing this um, context word when we feed the model with the observed center word. That's how we think about it. And this probability is parameterized by theta. And I think this is a useful way of thinking about the input output structure for the skip gram model. Just um, some notation here, these values here, we think of them as the logits. And then this vector here, that is a vector with capital V elements, and each of the elements are between zero and one, and they all sum to one because we've pushed it through a softmax function. Okay, now we can go a little bit further in this summary, and we can write that the optimization approach that we're going to follow is basically going to be that if I observe this particular pair of center word with context um, word, then we've got a loss function here, and that is going to be negative, the log of this probability. And that probability is given by the output of the model for context word um, O and center word C, and the model is parameterized by theta. So this is exactly what we did before. I'm just thinking about the output of the model as this massive vector over your whole vocabulary. And you're basically, for a particular um, OC observation, you, you have this in your loss function. And then the overall loss function, and this is exactly equivalent to what we've looked at before, but just written out in a slightly different way, is then just the sum over all possible center um, context word pairs for the loss function C, O, and theta. Okay, now I've swapped these around, so let me just swap this around as well to just be consistent throughout. Okay, so we've got center word, context word, and sometimes in Skipgram you think of this as the input and this is the output, but that's not really what's happening. The input of the model is really the center word C, the output of the model is really this massive vector over all the words in your vocabulary. And what you're trying to do really is for that particular word that you've observed as a context word, you're trying to make this value large. Okay, and the largest you can get it is equal to one. And that's really what you're trying to do. You're trying to get this value to be larger than the other values that you um, can possibly observe as context words. And that's, that's really what, um, what's happening in the negative log likelihood when you train it in this way. Let's just think about this backwards. To get this value large, it means that um, when I push it through the softmax, the largest value here will also be the largest value here. So to get this value large, you want what? You want this dot product between u and v to be large. And that's really nice because if you go back to our definition of something like cosine distance, really taking this all the way back, um, in that, like one of the first videos on word embeddings, I said we often use cosine distance to compare things. And cosine distance is based on the dot product between the two vectors divided by the magnitudes of them. So if you have a very large dot product, then we will have a small cosine distance between the, the two vectors. Okay, so I hope this little summary of um, of Skipgram helps you to actually visualize what's going on as an input output function.